It is Sunday, September 25th, 2022. And on this week's edition of Sunday Sofa Time, we're talking about Cunard versus Virgin Voyages. Welcome back everyone and happy Sunday. If you're watching this on Sunday or whatever day this is that you're watching this, if you're looking at me on your screen there and thinking, wow, that dude looks tired. You would be right. Not only did I stay up late to watch Roger Federer's last professional match last night at the Labor Cup, did you watch it? Let me know in the comments below. But it has also been a rough couple of weeks here at the very unofficial headquarters in Hamburg, Germany, since we got back from our Virgin Voyages cruise. And I'm not gonna talk about that in this video, but if you wanna know what's going on, just check out the video I posted a couple days ago. That's where all the details are. And in this video, as I mentioned, we are gonna be talking about Virgin Voyages compared to Cunard based on my experiences. These are two cruise lines that cater to very specific and quite different markets. I think the only thing that both of them have in common are they both have some things about them that are undeniably British. We're going to talk about the food, the cabins, the shows, the pools, and the activities on board. Price is a difficult thing to compare just because there are different seasons, there are different cruise cabin categories, there's so many different factors. But speaking of food and things included, I have cruised on over 25 different cruise ships and I have never experienced a smaller selection of restaurants and included dining venues than what was offered on the Queen Mary 2. The main dining venues are the main dining rooms. These are these gigantic, very luxurious looking large rooms where hundreds or maybe even thousands of passengers show up at set dining times, at set tables to eat dinner together every night. There's a menu that changes every day. There is also buffet service that changes every day. There's food offered in the pub with a set menu. And in addition to lunch in the buffet or main dining room, you can also go to afternoon tea in the Queen's room and that is included in the price. Other than that, there are very limited additional dining options on the Queen Mary 2 and they all cost extra. We found our experience in the main dining room on the Queen Mary 2 to be less than luxurious. The food was okay, the service was not good, but the buffet was pretty impressive and we enjoyed a lot of the very large selection that was offered up there. By the way, soft drinks are included in the price of the cruise on Cunard. And if you're new to cruising, that is not very common. Virgin Voyages, on the other hand, offers the largest selection of dining venues on a cruise ship, at least that I've experienced, and I'm pretty sure it's the largest at sea. They have over 20 different restaurants and dining opportunities like gelato and pizza and things like that. And they are all, every single one of them, included in the price of the cruise. So not only does Virgin cost less than Cunard, but there's also more included. They have some signature restaurants that offer things like traditional Mexican food, Korean barbecue, or Italian. And they do have a form of buffet called the galley. Now, You'll know from watching any of my other Virgin Voyages videos that Virgin seems to take anything involved in the cruise experience and change it just a little bit to have something that's new and different. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're making everything better, they're just making it different. And one thing that's different about the galley buffet on Virgin is not only can you be served at the table if you'd like, but the menu at the different stations does not change. It stays the same throughout the whole cruise. There may be certain specialty items that show up at the different stations, but as far as the big picture goes, it stays the same. There are no huge dining rooms on Virgin Voyages where everybody shows up at the same time and gets a set table to sit at every night. It's much more like picking out a restaurant and going out to eat, and we experienced basically only exceptional service on Virgin Voyages. By the way, soft drinks are also included on this cruise line. So that's one thing that both cruise lines have in common. Now let's talk about cabins. According to Cruise Mapper, the basic balcony size on Queen Mary 2 is 270 square feet with the balcony being 80 square feet. This is a pretty generous size. The color scheme and furnishings are once again very traditional and seemed quite upscale, but on our cruise on the Queen Mary 2, there were quite a lot of signs of wear and tear. There were stains on the couch, rusty pipes on the balcony, squeaky doors, 
things like that, things that you wouldn't expect on a cruise line that markets itself and prices itself as a luxury experience. One positive thing about our cabin on the Queen Mary 2 is there is plenty of closet space. So if you are like Marcus and I are and like to unpack everything at the beginning of the cruise and have it all sort of hidden away, you definitely will be happy with the cabins on Queen Mary 2. As far as Virgin goes, the standard sea terraces, which is their name for a balcony cabin, like I said, everything's just a little bit different, are 225 square feet according to Cruise Mapper with a balcony size of only 40 square feet, so exactly half of the outdoor space as on Queen Mary 2. Of course, Virgin has some of the newest ships at sea and our cabin seemed like we were the first people staying in it. It was so clean and new looking. The design is very modern, offers self-opening and closing curtains, an adjustable lighting scheme, a bed that can be turned into a couch, and a hammock on every balcony. There are less furnishings in the cabin, which makes it seem very roomy, but the downside of that is there's very little space to hide your stuff. There, there aren't a lot of sort of yeah, hidden spaces where you can unpack your things. And in addition to that, the bathrooms in the cabins on Virgin Voyages, at least in our sea terrace, it was probably on the smaller side as far as average bathroom sizes goes in cruise cabins. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the shows, which is something that is near and dear to me. As you know, I am a retired uh, professional musical theater performer. I love to go see shows, and I love to see a bunch of different kind of shows, but I do kind of have my opinions about certain things. I'm gonna try to leave those maybe out of this and just give you details. We'll see how I do with that mission. And what I wanna tell you is the show concept on Virgin Voyages is very, very different than than on any other cruise line. Many of the shows are more like experiences than they are like going to a show. And the audience is standing or moving from venue to venue to catch all the action and there is a lot of audience participation. Hip hop dancing and circus arts are used in most of the shows and there aren't a lot of really lavish costumes, live music, or singing. There are also secret shows that you can only see if you happen to be in the right place at the right time and get invited to. And the shows on Virgin include a lot of perverted jokes and adult humor. So if you're easily offended, the shows on Virgin are probably not going to be to your taste. Flipping over to Cunard, the shows on the Queen Mary 2 are much more like Las Vegas style or Broadway style musical reviews with a lot of high kicks, lavish costumes, live singing, and a live band on stage. You know what is gonna be in the shows, you know when to get to the theater, you walk in, sit down, and are entertained without having to participate or embarrass yourself or the people you're with. The Queen Mary 2 also has a combination lecture hall and planetarium where you can learn more about the world we live in or the stars above. Here's something to note, on our cruise in the spring of 2022, there were many seats in this venue that were just broken and sitting there. I know I'm not the first person on YouTube to mention that the Queen Mary 2 needs a facelift soon. It's just one more thing that just does not reflect this luxury level experience that they advertise and that they charge for. Two more specific things I wanna talk about in this video, that is the pool area and the activities, but I'm gonna to get to that right after this commercial break. Did you get one? What was it about? Write it in the comments below if you wanna. The pool, or if you're Marsha from the Brady Bunch, the pool. Neither of these ships has actual huge pools that you can swim laps in, but that is also something that you won't find on many cruise ships at all. The only one that comes to mind that I've cruised on recently that has an actual pool that you can really swim in is uh, the Celebrity Apex and also the Mindshift German ships. They also all have really long pools that you can really swim in. But as far as what is offered on the Valiant Lady and on the Queen Mary 2, the Queen Mary 2 offers more. There are two outdoor pools with I would say an unmatched amount of deck space surrounding them. I don't think I've seen that much space on any other cruise ship. There's also a quite intimate indoor pool area that I'm sure gets super crowded on 
cold days, but when we were on the cruise, it was a cold day, but there was no water in the indoor pool. And also one of the outdoor pools also had no water in it. And there are hot tubs available on several different decks in several different areas of the ship. So if you'd rather just sit and lounge in the warm water, you will be able to do that on the Queen Mary too. The Valiant Lady and all of Virgin ships are notorious for having an exceptionally small pool area. This is way more of a place to just hang out and kind of put your feet or your legs in the water than it is a place to actually go swimming at all. There's a second body of water on the top deck that's kind of around the bar from the main pool and it is a large round space with several seating areas in it and I was surprised to find out on our just most recent cruise it was super hot in the Mediterranean. It was in the high 80s every day and the main pool was so crowded that I thought okay I'll go get in that other pool there's more space in there but it's actually a hot tub. So you have one smallish pool and several hot tubs on several different decks and this big hot tub behind the bar on the main pool deck. Even though the pool area is very tight, there are many areas where there are sun loungers and also these red sort of I don't know, like mini cabanas. And I never had a problem finding some place to sit out in the sun when I wanted to, but sometimes it was just a little bit further away from the actual pool. There is something really cool about this pool space on Virgin Voyages, and I'm gonna get to that in the activities, which is what we're gonna start talking about right now. So it's not gonna take that long, don't worry. The onboard activities that are offered on these two cruise lines are extreme, extreme extremely different. If you like water, slides, go-karts, huge observation platforms, all these things that I always mention when I think about Royal Caribbean, none of those desires are going to be fulfilled on either one of these lines. Both ships do offer a casino, but both of them are smaller than average for large cruise ships. You'll definitely have much bigger cruise ships on Royal Car uh, Cruise ships, the casinos, much bigger casinos on Royal Caribbean and NCL. Virgin definitely caters to the young and young at heart. There are more traditional activities like trivia and bingo, but for instance, bingo is hosted by a drag queen and it includes musical numbers and a lot of adult humor. Many of the activities are very active, like dodgeball, like hip hop dance classes, and the ship has a very awesome dance club. And speaking of the dance club, even on our first cruise on Virgin Voyages, where the ship was only like at one quarter capacity, the atmosphere and the like the fun factor in the dance club at night was amazing. Okay, back to the pool. On warm weather cruises, the highlight of Virgin Scarlet Night, which I guess is compared to the Gala Night on other cruise ships. But the highlight of Scarlet Night is the pool party. And people, this blew my mind. It's an insane pool party with dancers, a singer, and a huge inflatable octopus. I've never seen adult People act so crazy at a pool party or any kind of party on a cruise ship ever. And because the pool area is so small, it takes on a club-like feeling. I mean, I've been to pool parties on other cruise ships and I've had a lot of fun at pool parties on other cruise ships, but the atmosphere is just not the same because it's usually a group of people around the pool and then a big open space on all sides. You know what I mean? I've never been to one of the big pool parties in Las Vegas or on Ibiza. Are they like that? Let me know in the comments below if you've been to one of those. So now let's take a 180 degree turn in the other direction and talk about the activities on Cunard. By the way, are you all happy that I'm saying Cunard now? Here in Germany, people pronounce it Cunard. That is kind of how it's written. And in my videos about this cruise line, I said Cunard several times and the way that that these Cunard fanboys tore me up in the comments. Wow. Some people take that very seriously. So the activities on Cunard are much different than the activities on Virgin Voyages. There's nothing loud or crazy about the activities on the Queen Mary 2. They are more relaxed and more refined. They do have the standards like quiz and bingo too, and they also offer a lot of ways to enrich your education and learn about something, such as painting workshops or computer workshops. You might be surprised to know that there is also a dance club on the Queen Mary 2, but I just can't imagine that it ever gets 
it's as wild and fun, crazy as the dance club on Virgin Voyages does, just because of the clientele who cruise with Queen Mary II. One very popular place on the ship is called the Queen's Room, and to compare this to Virgin Voyages, if you named something the Queen's Room on Virgin Voyages, then that would obviously be for the LGBTQ community because there are a lot of gay people cruising on Virgin Voyages. But the Queen's Room on Queen Mary 2 is actually dedicated to the Queen Mary. No, not the Queen, comma, Mary. I mean, the Queen Mary, who the ship is named after. I think just about every night in the Queen's Room, there is a live band playing and they play music to encourage people to couple dance on the dance floor. So there are well-dressed people on the dance floor just about every night dancing the cha-cha, dancing the foxtrot, those kind of things. All together, the activities on Cunard are much slower paced and not geared for super active, adventurous people. So now to just go through the all together vibe of these two cruise lines, Cunard is very traditional and attracts a more mellow, refined and laid back clientele. You have to be ready to dress up every night and you're gonna encounter wait staff wearing tuxedos and white gloves. There is a limited dining selection offering mostly traditional flair without a lot of exotic flavors and there are upscale activities that are catered to less active people, very lavish shows with singing, dancing and lots of costume changes, but they do have older ships and attract a somewhat older clientele. However, kids are allowed on Cunard. Virgin is very new school. They have a very relaxed dress code, a huge restaurant selection, but the food is kind of exotic and that definitely does not appeal to everyone I know. Virgin offers very active and kind of silly activities for the younger and the young at heart with a lot of adult related humor. Their ships are very new and they attract a younger clientele. And here is also a big difference. There are no kids allowed on Virgin Voyage. The shows on Virgin are very avant-garde and I would say kind of strange with a lot of adult subject matter and they have crazy pool parties and lots of LGBTQ cruisers and crew members. People, I know there are so many things to compare about cruise lines. I'm sure there's things that I left out or things that you would explain differently and I'm sure you're gonna let me know in the comments below. Go for it, that's what they're there for. In my opinion, like I said before, both of these cruise lines offer very specific experiences catered to totally different markets, and I think they're great for those people. Neither of these cruise ships are high on my list to necessarily cruise with again, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't. So you, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button on your way out of here. Check out my book, Getting Stitches on a Cruise Ship. It's available on Amazon now. It includes 10 stories of fun, crazy things that have happened to me in my travels around the world, including actually getting stitches on a cruise ship. Thank you so much to everyone over on patreon.com slash very unofficial for all the support you give me every month, especially the VIPs whose names you're gonna see right now.